Hello everyone. Welcome to our series of Arthonomics, where we shall discuss various concepts related to the field of economy. And today we are going to talk about assets under management, AUM. Now I'm absolutely sure that you must have seen headlines like this. Mutual fund industries AUM falls by 18%. After soaring six years, mutual fund AUM sees sharp fall. Decline in AUM to make equity MFs mutual funds costlier, dent investor returns. So AUM, asset under management, has been in the news quite a lot. Most of our headlines related to, the, related to Indian economy are filled with this term, right? So today we are going to talk about AUM, assets under management, and how are they important to the mutual fund industry? Well, you know that recently RBI gave a 50,000 crore relief package to mutual fund industry because their AUM was following. So now the question arises, what is AUM and why is it significant for mutual fund industry? All right. But before getting into the details of AUM, we need to know some basics re related to economy, some basics about Indian economy or any economy for that matter. All right. So let's take a look at certain basics. Now, generally, we all view economy from a Keynesian perspective, Keynesian lens. Now, Keynesian lens is named after the famous 20th century economist John Maynard Keynes. Now, what is this Keynesian perspective of economy, a Keynesian lens of economy? What happens is that in any economy, there are few firms who produce goods and services and there are various households which house consumers who buy those goods and services. So what these firms do is they make goods and services and sell these goods and services to households or consumers. What do households do in return? Households buy these goods and services and pay a certain amount to buy these goods and services. So households do a certain amount of expenditure on these firms to buy these goods and services. All right. So from a Keynesian perspective, firms make goods and services and households pay these firms to buy those goods and services. And that's how firms make some profit out of it. But there is another transaction that is happening between these two entities. What happens is that these firms are actually run by people. It's the people who are running the show behind the curtains. All right. People are making goods and services and these people are employed by these firms. Now, when these firms employ these people's people like certain managers, laborers, entrepreneurs and so on. Right. So what do firms give them give these people in return? Firms give factor incomes to these people in return and these people are coming from these households only. So what happens is various laborers, managers are coming from households and providing various factor services to firms. In return, firms pay them certain compensation which comes under the category of factor income. So the entire thing is going like this. Firms hire certain people for labor, for, labor, for managerial services and so on. And firms pay these people something in return which comes under the category of factor income. When these people provide factor services, then firms produce goods and services and these goods and services are bought again by these same people, same consumers by their expenditure. So what happens is by employing certain factor services, firms produce goods and services. These goods and services are eventually sold to the households, your consumers and consumers in return do certain amount of expenditure. So in a way, money is flowing in a circle. Right now, this is viewing the economy from a Keynesian perspective, right? So whenever there is a recession in Keynesian eyes, yeah, under Keynesian lens, the remedy that is there to resolve a recession is that government should increase the income of households. What should government do when there is a recession in an economy like this? Now, whenever there is a recession, that means that recession means that firms are not producing enough goods and services. Therefore, firms are not getting enough expenditure and because firms are not getting enough expenditure, there is not enough income uh, that there is not enough income that could be distributed back to the consumers. So in a recession, many of these people are unemployed. They are not being paid factor incomes and these firms are going through losses and that's why they are not being able to produce goods and services. So in such a situation, what does the government do? Government does the following. Government provides a fiscal stimulus. Government reduces taxes, income tax rate, so that households have more money at their disposal. 
If households would have more money at their disposal, they would increase demand for goods and services and they would do more expenditure on firms. And the more expenditure they do on firms, the more they'll, they'll be getting factor incomes in return. Right? So what, do the, what does the government do? Government decreases tax rates and government increases its expenditure. So government would reduce its revenue sources and government would increase its expenditure. Now this entire thing is known as fiscal stimulus. Fiscal stimulus means that the government is pushing or pumping money into the economy. And by doing this, households have more income, firms have more money. And by through this, the economy gets back on track if the economy was in a phase of recession. So whenever there is a downturn, like the current COVID-19 induced economic downturn, government should increase its fiscal deficit and provide a fiscal stimulus. You must have heard this in the news quite a lot, right? You must have heard this that government needs to come up with a fiscal package. Government needs to provide fiscal stimulus to the economy. You must be hearing these terms. Now, what does fiscal stimulus mean? Fiscal stimulus boosts aggregate demand. And how does government achieve that? Government either reduces tax burden on the consumers or government increases its expenditure on the firms. Because after all, government has to also buy certain stuff from the firms, right? So what does the government do? Through its fiscal stimulus package, government reduces taxes and increases its expenditure, thereby pumping money into the economy. And that is why due to the current lockdown, Indian economy is going through a severe downturn. And that's why people are demanding that government should provide fiscal stimulus. Now, the problem is that this is not the complete picture. When we view the economy from Keynesian perspective and Keynesian perspective only, then we are ignoring a significant chunk of our economy, significant activity that, that is taking place in the economy. Now, what is that activity? Actually, when you were looking at the economy from a Keynesian perspective, you were ignoring certain things. What are those things? Let's take a look at the complete story. Now, households get income and they choose to spend their income in two ways. Whatever the income, income they get, a certain portion of that income is spent in consumption. They consume certain goods and services, but the rest of the amount is saved. So an income, so the income of a household is spent, yeah, is utilized through two ways. Certain amount is consumed and certain amount is saved. Now, when we were looking at the economy from a Keynesian perspective, we were only focusing on the consumption aspect. What happens to this saving aspect? Have you ever noticed? Have you ever wondered where do savings go? Now, let's take a look at that aspect. Now, to understand how savings are utilized in an economy, you need to understand the process of financial intermediation. Because after understanding this process, you'll be able to know how savings are utilized in an economy, how the entire country's savings are channelized into the economy to make economy more productive. All right. So let's suppose this circle, the left hand circle represents the entire savings of our economy. All the households have sa saved this much amount of money. Now, let's suppose the entire savings are deposited into a bank. All right. After all, all the households, yeah, after all, your household also deposits certain amount of their savings in a bank. You deposit your savings in a bank. Now, let's suppose all the savings of the economy are deposited in banks. Now, banks are depositing, yeah, banks are providing the facility of deposit, right? Now, saving money in banks would provide you a return of 4%. Let's suppose banks are providing you a return of 4% for depositing money in a particular bank. Now, bank has all the savings with itself. Now, what do banks do with this saving? Banks lend this money to certain firms who are in need of finance. Banks loan this money out to firms who actually need finance to expand their operations. Now, what do banks do? Banks offer consumers to save their money in their banks in form of deposits and give them 4% return or 4% interest, right? And banks use that similar, yeah, same money to lend to firms at 6% interest rate. So banks deposit money at 4% and loan out money at 6%. This 2% difference is known as spread and from this spread, banks actually take their profit out. Now this entire process is known as financial intermediation and banks perform this function. Now banks are not alone in performing this function. There are various other financial institutions that provide the service of, yeah, perform the function of financial intermediation. 
banks perform financial intermediation mutual funds perform financial intermediation venture capital funds perform financial intermediation and various other non banking finance companies provide uh, perform the function of financial intermediation so what is financial intermediation actually banks are financial intermediaries between households and firms right banks are a way to channelize savings into investment by these firms right so that is why banks are known as financial intermediaries because they perform the function of financial intermediation and banks mutual funds venture capital funds various other funds and nbfcs perform this similar function they take money yeah they channelize savings from various households and they give that money or use that money to finance various firms who are in the need of finance all right now all these different financial intermediaries like banks mutual funds venture capital funds nbfcs they all are constituents or participants of financial market so it's actually the financial market that provides the service of financial intermediation it's actually the financial market that channelizes savings into investment all right so now you know the complete picture Keynesian perspective if you look at the economy from a Keynesian perspective that was only focusing on consumption or expenditure by the consumers but this perspective when you add this picture to the entire picture then you know the entire economy how the entire entire economy is functioning now the Keynesian domain the one we were talking about just earlier was managed or is managed by the government government actually handles the fiscal stimulus fiscal policy or the Keynesian aspect of the economy this aspect the financial intermediation aspect is managed by or is influenced by various regulators rbi being the most important one of them all right now the financial market has the job of financial intermediation but financial market can also be basically divided into two parts well financial market is one part of financial market is debt financial market and the other is equity debt means that financial intermediaries channelize savings use savings or gather garner savings from various households and loan that money out equity angle ya equity segment of financial market is that savings are channelized into financial intermediaries and financial intermediaries buy shares of various companies through that money right so financial markets would be debt and equity all right so yeah now that you are familiar with the keynesian side as well as the financial side of the economy now we'll understand what is assets under management now in this example we'll take a look at mutual funds how do mutual funds operate so what happens is mutual funds you must have heard certain things about mutual funds especially this line mutual funds are subject to market risk please read the offer document carefully before investing right now mutual funds are a important segment yeah important constituent of financial market what do mutual funds do now there are various households who want to channelize their money into mutual funds there are various households who want to invest their money in market they don't want to lend to banks because banks are providing a very limited return they have various options these households have various options either they can uh, either they can deposit of either they can give that money to the bank in the form of fixed deposit but fixed deposit has a very low interest rate so they want to invest their savings yeah channelize their savings into the market into the financial market but to invest your money into the market you require a deep knowledge of how market works right now that deep knowledge is not available to uh, a common man a common household right now mutual funds jump the fray jump into the picture what do mutual funds do mutual funds ask you that you should give your money to them and they will invest this money on your behalf in the economy or in the market so what many households do is they give their savings to mutual funds and mutual funds invest that money into different parts of the market either equity market or debt market how do they invest in equity market well here's an example the savings that are channelized into mutual funds what do mutual funds do mutual funds buy 5000 shares worth rupees 10 of reliance then they buy 7000 shares worth rupees 20 of tata motors then they buy 10000 share of rupees 5 of bajaj industry right now your money is invested in these companies by mutual funds on your behalf all right so the asset under management of this of these mutual funds yeah this mutual fund is this mutual fund let's suppose this mutual fund is xyz 
so the name of the company is the name of this mutual fund is xyz so the amount of assets under management of this xyz mutual fund is 240000 how asset under management means the amount of money mutual funds yeah the amount of money any fund is investing on behalf of their investors right so the amount of money invested by this xyz mutual fund is 5000 into 10 is 50000 7000 into 20 is 1 lakh 40000 10000 into 5 is uh 50000 so the total amount of money invested by this mutual fund is 2 lakh 40000 now the amount of money handled the amount of savings of different households handled by this mutual fund and invested in various companies is known as AUM assets under management so in this example asset under management of this xyz xyz mutual fund is 2 lakh 40000 now to understand uh, assets under management in a in a more comprehensive way let's take a look at the definition of assets under management now Assets under management is the total market value of investments that a person or entity manages on behalf of clients. Like here, mutual funds are investing 2,40,000 on behalf of their clients, that is these households. So assets under management would be this. All right. Now the exact formula for calculation of assets under management may vary from company to company. Now assets under management, how do assets under management increase, right? If more and more investors choose to invest their money with a particular mutual fund. So if this mutual fund is able to gather more households, is able to gather more savings from different households, then assets under management of this mutual fund would increase. If more and more households channelize their savings through this mutual fund, then AUM of this mutual fund would increase. So when increased investor flows, then AUM increases then appreciation of capital or assets what do that what does that mean let's suppose 5000 shares of reliance bought by this mutual fund currently they are priced at 10 rupees let's suppose in future six months down the line they their prices double now their prices their price the price of reliance shares is rupees 20 so overnight or maybe six months down the line these 5000 shares which were worth 50000 would now be worth 1 lakh so in a sense asset under management of this mutual fund would increase by 50000 right if the prices of uh, if the price of shares of different companies increases then assets under management of this mutual fund would also increase this number 240000 would also increase so appreciation of capital or assets is also a way to increase aum all right and reinvested dividends now what happens is when you invest in a company by buying shares every year that company gives you a certain form of dividend on these shares right now if this mutual fund decides to reinvest that dividend in buying other shares right so their assets under management would increase all right now when does AUM decrease now decrease investor flows when less amount of less number of households are investing through a particular mutual fund so AUM would decrease then decline in market value of assets if price of shares can increase price of shares can also fall so when prices of share falls then market value of these assets decreases and assets under management decrease all right and there is another way by which AUM of a particular mutual fund or any fund for that matter would decrease and that is redemption of investment by clients if these households are not happy by this mutual fund if these households are not satisfied by the performance of this mutual fund then they could choose to redeem their investment they would go to this xyz mutual fund and they would say that please return our money now when mutual fund has to return money return the money of various households then assets under management would decrease now this phenomena is known as redemption so when mutual funds your entire economy is going through losses like currently the economy is going through loss losses right when the entire economy is going through a downturn then mutual fund segment is also not profitable and when mutual fund segment is not profit profitable then these households lose interest and trust in these mutual funds and they demand that these mutual funds should redeem their money should return their money when that happens AUM of mutual funds decreases and that is precisely the reason why AUM assets under management of mutual funds currently are decreasing and that is why RBI decided to give a bailout of 50,000 crore mutual funds assets AUM mutual funds assets under management are decreasing because there is an increase in redemption pressure because many clients are actually redeeming their investment they are 
uh, they are asking for their money back because they have no hope in the financial market they think the economy is going through a downturn and they don't want to invest their money in the market they want they actually prefer gold over investing their money in the market right now why is AUM important and why do people talk about AUM a lot? Why, why does AUM actually feature a lot in newspapers, right? Now, why AUM matters? Let's take a look at this box. It is an important tool to determine strength of an investment company. True. The more AUM, the more assets under management of a mutual fund company, the more prestigious it is for that company. That means that company is handling a large number of investment. So it is, it becomes a prestige issue, right? And that also means that more and more people trust this particular mutual fund. All right. AUM is also used as a marketing tool to attract new investors to an investment company. All right. Where would you want to invest your, uh, or which mutual fund would you want to invest your money in? You would want to see that a particular mutual fund has handled a lot of investments. That's the place where you would want to invest your money, right? So a big mutual fund company, which has a very large AUM, that mutual fund uh, company actually is able to garner more and more savings. All right. So it's important for uh, a mutual fund company to attract new investors. Now, decreased AUM increases the risk of redemption pressure and decreases further investor inflows. Now what happens is when a mutual fund company's AUM decreases, then people lose confidence in that mutual fund company and the existing investors of that mutual fund company would want their investment back. Hence redemption pressure and further decline in AUM. All right. So that's it from my side, guys. I hope you understood the entire aspect of assets under management AUM. If you still have any doubts, then please write about those doubts in the comment section below. I'll see you next time with more stuff. Thank you.